it's it's like I'm in the fourth dimension and somebody's asking me to describe it verbally and that's what the fourth dimension is all about is no words no symbols no images all pure real energy and vibrations and and if I thought about how cruel of a world this is I would probably just commit suicide after a while if that was what I spent my energy thinking about I would definitely not have any strength left to create music should I be a good I be a what I be a dead if I didn't get a message going to my head I am what I am Uh, Zygmunt, this mic fell off again. It's not allowed. What it is, is we're, we're in sunny Hollywood, California, and we're getting ready to make a record, and, and somebody said, well, maybe we should make a record in a huge house. And we said, yeah, that'd be great, because then we wouldn't have to go into a studio, and we wouldn't have to deal with the, the anal retentive vibrations of, of, you know, the sterilicity involved with that sort of recording environment. We could be focused on exactly what we wanted to do, was make the most beautiful record in the world. We felt that aluminum foil and obnoxious secretaries would just put a monkey wrench into our music, and we didn't want one. things about this house is the first place that the Beatles ever took LSD. Four Beatles were staying here, they took LSD. It's the first place that Jimi Hendrix ever had sex with David Frost. And uh, David's been seeing a proctologist ever since. I guess Jimmy was rather large. You know that Magic just moved up here somewhere? Magic just what? Magic Johnson, he was living in Bel Air. Right. And uh, he moved around here somewhere. Really? To a, yeah, to a gated community off right off Mulholland is what I hear. That's what the, that's what the A man was letting me know. The day in the life here is really kind of the most ideal recording situation a musician could ever ask for. That was a big deal. It stays on the same flat plane as dinner. No, it doesn't. It goes. So it's about the first halfway through the verse. We do the, the segue part. We wake up. That segue one. Right. 12 or 1, and then Rick rolls in about 2.30 with Brendan, our engineer Brendan, and, uh, and we start recording. <laughs> try to plug us into a certain formula or like he doesn't have a way that he works and tries to make us like that he's, he's just uh, trying to bring the most out of us for what we are and uh, you know he keep he manages to to uh, keep his emotional distance from the music and have his objectivity which is you know what he has to do especially because we're so completely caught up in a, we run on pure emotion 
And that's what we're all about. And we're making an amazing, amazing, groundbreaking, revolutionary, beautiful, artistically heightened, incredible record. If Baron von Munchausen had ejaculated the four of us being the Red Hot Chili Peppers onto a chessboard, I would have to say that Rick Rubin would be the perfect chess player for that particular board. This is a little secret room up here. This is a room where nobody hardly ever is. It's a very nice little room that... Oh! Oh, Flea! Hey! Get out of here! Oh! It's been difficult, because everybody wants to get to the band while they're recording the press or their friends and so on. And we've probably given them maybe a little bit more to do than than they, not that they need to do, but maybe more than they should while they're trying to record, but it's hard, you know, we're up against the wall, we've got to get this record out by September, we haven't had a record out in two years, the press lead time is 90 days, so by trying to get as much done while they're recording and make it as easy a schedule as possible for them, we'll get that resolved. Um, you know, the other thing is, is just, I guess, keeping everybody out of their hair and, and off their back so they can just work. Hold me naked, if you will, in your arms, in your legs, in your pussy, I'd kill to be with you, to kiss with you, I do miss you, I love you. Bridge? Bridge. That's the same? Yep. Lay me down. Lay me down. Versus a half more cycle. Lay me down, lay me down, lay me down. Lay me down, lay me down, lay me down. Lay me down. Lay me down. Long, 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 long time ago. Psycho Sexy, I was, the main thought that I was concentrating on in my head was, because there was this really beautiful girl there at the studio, and I was thinking, if Anthony doesn't fuck tonight, then I'm not doing my job as a guitar player, because this is the sexiest song, you know, that I've ever heard in my life. And a lot of the times, you know, I'll get an erection when I'm working on something, or write, writing, like playing guitar, and uh, and I'll just go masturbate, or sometimes I'll I'll try to hold back because I'll I'll see the uh, the orgasm is something that will be detrimental to my strength creatively. So sometimes I won't, you know, I'll, I'll see that erection as being my enemy. But I didn't shake that. Only shape here. You didn't get you didn't get down here. 
and I shaved my mustache. I didn't shave anything of the chop that I thought you might be interested in. For instance, <laughs> how, do you know, how do you know what I was interested in? How do you know I wasn't interested in some of the neck area that you completely shaved off? I'm, 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 I, have to, I have to withdraw my position as your coach, because he has no coach, and you didn't come to take me. Made the, made the best man win. Okay. Yeah, it is only fair because he didn't have a coach. And something tells me you would look a lot different if you had that. <laughs> I'm not a great rat right now. But something tells me you would look great. Chop, it's all part of the chop. But we're judging the chops, not the goatees. Does head shape come into this at all? <laughs> head shape does <laughs> Do we consider head shape? Take it all in. Alright, I think I've made the decision. I'm prepared to write it down. Oh, come on, look at all the chops. He, he, I got it right here, Brennan. Brennan, no, I'll leave it here. Wait, what do you think about the fullness of my style? You don't have to tell the judge. You're about to be disqualified. Fuck you. I'm trying Just to. like you were disqualified from the fart off when you shit your pants. <laughs> the judge is leaving room. Being a red hot chili pepper is about, you know, is about being free and not being tied down to anything, not not uh, trying to uh, fit into any mold or any style or any category. And um, just as far as, as, you know, a lifestyle, which extends, you know, your lifestyle extends to the way you look and the way you talk and the way you act. And um, anyone that would, that would consciously, you know, apply any sort of rock and roll cliches to their life, um, obviously would not fit into being a red hot chili pepper. And uh, someone that just had a natural passion, love for music, and particularly a love for funk music, would be someone that could be in the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> Basically, I just do whatever Rick Rubin, the producer, wants done. It's anything from getting his car washed to getting him food, going to the store and buying him light bulbs and candles. Um, for the band, I do pretty much the same thing. Right now, I'm going to go drop off Clara, his daughter, his laundry. Anything they want, because basically they, they don't need to think about anything that's going on except for the recording of their album so whatever I can do for them that they would normally do as in grocery shop car washing that's what I take care of I wouldn't let anything at all that, that I thought wasn't directly aimed at helping my creativity come out I treat it as if it was a knife to my heart. Like, uh, William Burroughs always talks about the world is nothing but allies and enemies. And it's important to, to understand what things around you are the enemies. And a lot of the time your worst enemy is your, is your ego.
It's kind of one thing. So that would defeat the whole coin thing. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Call it in the air. Okay. How come he gets to call? He's home team. Oh. He's from Chatsworth. That's true. All right, call it in the air. That's. <laughs> you get to see it first. Okay. Oh. Chatsworth team will be playing in the <laughs> That's gotta hurt. Maybe you'll get better next time. <laughs> okay, but real quick, what, 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 oh, those are the list ones. There might be here. something I could do a great mood part on right now. List is um. Oh. Whoa. Oh. You let me have that today on your own. I was sitting there. Something happened. I got it on. Look at you and Ross. Oh, that wasn't Ross. Oh, look out, look out. <laughs> oh, come on. I, oh! I knew you could just be laughing and grinning. Oh! Look out, look out. The, the, the meanest. I guess I'm the meanest. I, I don't know. I've seen Chad get pretty mean for my amusement at the fans. <laughs> okay. yeah. Chad, Chad, will, Chad will yell at fans and push them around just so I laugh. Okay, the flower, <laughs> the flower child. The flower child of the group. Who is I would it? say that John is probably the flower child. I of the thought group. it was going to be John. No. Okay, the lady killer. <laughs> Please. Uh, I, 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 between the four, between the four, you are the flower child. <laughs> the lady killer. That's that's uh, that's obviously me. The uh, the troublemaker, Chad. Chad is the trouble. Yeah, right? yeah. We've all made our share of trouble. We all make a lot of trouble. <laughs> this mature lady is lonely and wants more than a vibe. I want to suck on men ages 19 to 65. That pretty much leaves it wide open. She's a spread, man, with a total herky with a fucking... That thing looks like a fucking cork stuck up her big fucking pussy and probably a nine-inch vibrator. That is so fucking disgusting. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> so, what? Six inches? What the fuck? <laughs> what is this? Are we seeing? What are we seeing? Dicks? This guy puts a picture of his dick in here. What does it say? It's six, six right. inches. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. That's... He's bragging about his dick. That's good. He must, he must be a damn handsome guy, too. That's so ridiculous. Listen to this guy. Uh, Ladies, don't pass this one up. I am so for real. Political record as it is a social political one. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Kendall. <laughs> oh my God. This girl has some fucking nipples. Soap on it. I know that soap on it, but what is it though? 
look at it, the picture. You can smell it. What is it? It's a bird. Yeah. See, there's his eye right there. Yeah. And there's his wings. And I can wash him. Yeah, you can wash him and make him look happy. Right in the pocket, guys. Here we go. Okay, you guys played it great, but Flea, uh, split the difference there. Come in a little bit, okay? And just because of my love for funk music and my, you know, my punk rock experiences, I transited the punk rock thing to funk, and it came out like this really hard, aggressive, slapping thing, which I was doing for a long time. You know, it's like, you know, you know, this really fast thing, and I, and I, you know, I did it. I did the hell out of it, you know, and I... I've done it all over the world and done it on a lot of records and you know, really made an, a name for myself doing it. And, um, and then I, you know, after continually doing it, I started realizing that I was kind of like setting up a trap for myself. Instead of me trying to like prove myself as like, you know, hey, I'm the bitch and bass player and I can do this and I can do that and I'm the fastest and the hardest, was to not think about playing but just to think about listening and to uh, just play what was right for the song to make the song good. Yeah, I don't want to work. I'll laugh. All right. Bye bye. Yeah, that was a cool little bit. Where did I go? That, that? See that? That should be the vibe. Like what you just. Yeah. It is so hard because there's so little time in each thing. But just keep them really simple. Ba dum, ba da dum. Okay. Ah, ba dum, ba dum. Okay. Top or bottom? From the top, I'm gonna tell you. Mix them up and keep it really simple. Don't go too naughty. Sounds funky. Yeah, right here. Right. It's kind of bright. Yeah, it's nice. Getting get bright all of a sudden.
this point, we're almost on a snowball. I mean, we're just rolling through. Um, the band, we have the recognition. Um, we've got the credibility. We've got the fan base. I, I, we have everything going for us. There really shouldn't be anything in our way. Where it's going is, I, I feel it's going straight up. I mean, it's just going to get as big as it could possibly get. And plus, like you said before, we're just about as lucky as they come at this point. I mean, how, how many, you know, musicians get to come and live in the palace and make a record? We're very fortunate. Although Led Zeppelin used to record in castles in Scotland and Ireland. And on hills. On in hills, the middle of yes. beautiful country. And on pills. <laughs> <laughs> any, any closing remarks? <laughs> um, I'm just loving the stretch on the boom girl again over there. She's stretching outwards like that and she looks like a beautiful creature of, of, of love, goddess, and this creation. I mean, yeah. I I like to, I to, that looks, it's, so, it's so nice to look over and see the bone girl all stretched out. And she's really she's got a beautiful body and it's just really much nicer to come and make a record in the house and do a television show with a beautiful bone girl than, than, uh, than not. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the record, I talked to him, and I noticed it's the same behavior reference. God, that's great. Metallica t-shirt. It's really a great song. Got a Metallica t-shirt. Got a little tiny baby mustache. Got a jacked up Camaro. Sitting in the parking lot of Anaheim Stadium. Smoking pot. The shot is scared to sleep here and has not spent one night here. Well, see, I've been sleeping here for six weeks. See, I can the thing is, show stud. The thing is, I just need to get away from the house. Hey, God, I take to the studio every morning. Very therapeutic. Cleans up my mind. Get ready to lay down some fucking funky tracks. Takes about 20 minutes from my house. Great. I love it. I love it. So I just try to just lay it down as hard and as funky as I can and let those guys just kind of paint over the top of it.
Like that whole thing, like up past the rift. It's just swallowed. Amazing. And, and the girl's just laughing, standing on her head for, for like five minutes. Whoa. And then when the girl takes her fist out, this is the most amazing part. And we're just standing up here like, Ooh. and And then she takes her fist out, and the girl's pussy is just a black hole. Just stretched. You've never seen a pussy that looks like this. It's just wide open and it went. <laughs> It was amazing. It was just a black hole. It's like, honey, you're going to have no trouble having what? kids. And it was staying open by itself. And you've never seen a pussy just naturally stay that long. Completely blocked. dilated. You have to go and wide and push your nose like this to make it close. <laughs> close that pussy right now. <laughs> oh, God, I'd like to see that. Yeah, it was fantastic. She was a fucking genius. She was a genius. And she was really nice, too. So that girl was artistically talented. Totally nuts. I like that psychedelic um, melody so song. So Psycho Sexy? No, he's talking about uh, Breaking the Girl. Oh, breaking yeah. the Girl's group. What'd you think of Sir Psycho Sexy? The long, yeah. funky rap. Yeah, great. Long, 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 long time ago. It has the Beatles ending to it. Yeah, yeah. the Beatles ending. Mm -hmm. Did you catch the lyrics in it? Yeah. <laughs> Radio Smash. Well, there's sex all through most of these tracks. There's a lot of sex. Well, there's, there's some sex. Breaking the girl's got to be what a or divergenizing too. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's <laughs> the way you would take it. How do you read into these? Get your mind out of the gun. Dude, Come fucking on. Larry Flint for nine years. <laughs> what do you expect me to think? Was that a song about candies and small flowers? Breaking no, up, everything has a sexual connotation up. to me. Right. It's a song about love. I mean, street. blood sugar. That was you know that a blood diabetic sugar. love song. Me. <laughs> <laughs> diabetic about it. The more was about, you know, that time of the month. I think we should have Lon write the industry. Okay, no, there you no. go. Wait, I've already been asked by Motley Crue to write the sleeve oh, okay. notes well, for their next record. But I, you know, I'm beyond. <laughs> soul to squeeze, you know. I got oh, more money and I'll be your record. Squeeze a little soul, pal. Yeah, I got you. People say it's in there. Scrotum man. Well, Mother's Milk was a very sexy record. Come on, man. I know you like us, Lon. Jeez. You don't want to be subliminal about What's this. wrong with being sexy? You're with the root. you got to be overt. Sexy? Sex. It's, it's sexist, right? What's wrong with sexist? What's going on, really? What's wrong with being sexist? This is the guy that made Dice Clay House all word. Please. There's honesty on this record in every groove. There's a boner coming in between the grooves. The, the correlation between sound and sex is undeniable if you let it be. And I think the fact that we have such a powerful sexuality to our music and to our performance and to our lyrics and to uh, the bass humping your face just correlates with the fact that, that we're completely free in everything that we do. We just allow the sexuality to come out. I think most any healthy young man um, playing music, you know, if you felt like it, could let the sexuality come through. It's just that we have no lid on, on that aspect of our music and we're not afraid to be completely honest with our sexuality. We don't try to hide it, and, and so it just sort of manifests itself in a, in a natural way. Um, I, I know that it's almost like a, a sexual exorcism for me when I'm on stage to have Flea and John and Chad playing behind me. I mean, it's exciting, and uh, it's sexually exciting for me. You know, it, it fills my body with a, a certain frequency, you know, a certain vibration that, that just makes me feel sexually potent, and I just sort of let that come through me uh, you know, uninhibitedly as possible. I love you! And you are so big! You're amazing! Yeah! Hang on, maybe this. I didn't sleep too good last night. Michelle! That would be a great record, a picture disc, a fun sex record. Yeah. It, it, it was like a floppy disc. We had a tape to our album. Uh -huh. we had, it was like a square, we had a picture in album. Yeah. With a picture yeah. of a girl on it. Okay. Wow. Well, Back a little. Flooded. Oh, thank God. That's a good name. I need to play this record. <laughs> I love eight and a half inches. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she loved. Did she have an accent, accent, English accent? No, she had like Swedish. some Swedish or Austrian or some crazy but shit. But it was like, you know, like Swedish, like via Hoboken. <laughs> it was like... Uh, this is amazing. She's a fucking genius. Totally insane, too.
I wonder if she still works at an Abbott Arby's. Damn. I don't know, maybe they like, get stretched to a limit or just... She told me she does performance art. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, that's what else she does. Aside from the Mitchell Brothers, she does her performance art. I thought it was great. God, I feel like just flying up there. She's really nice. It sounds funny, but... Oh, she, she was just really, really nice. nice. I, some of the nicest people. And really interesting, there. too. Like, yeah. just no morals whatsoever, yeah. which is great. You know, right. I mean, what's no. the point of that in this day and age after Hitler and after all the shitty fucking shit? It's like, it's no great. morals whatsoever. You're just trying to get fist. It's great. It's so great. fisted in public for money. That's, that's something that some of the most interesting people have uh, had strippers. What, what, what was that? What was that? Somebody yelling great. in cars. We got it right before that tape. It was great. Yelling in cars? I think it was. Girls, girls. It sounded really cool. Car. Girls in cars! <laughs> Hot money in the red eye, yeah, it's gotta be saved. Hot money in the red eye, wow, it's gotta be saved. I got a girl say she's long and tall, sleeps in the kitchen with beats in the hall. Hey, hot money in the red eye, oh, she gotta be saved. Love me, yeah, oh, she gotta be saved. Uh -huh. Hot money in the red eye, yeah, it's gotta be saved. Hot money in the red eye, wow, oh, she gotta be saved. You know the monkey not a bad one playing the grass But the monkey's nigga speaking that old girl you can't stop Hot body to the red hot Oh, she got a Brazil love me, uh-huh Yeah, she got a Brazil love me, yeah Hot body to the red hot Yeah, she got a Brazil I'm the mileage in the red hot, oh, she got a museum She got two more dope, got four more dying I'm gonna tell you more, but they ain't gonna mind, so I'm the mileage in the red hot, yeah, she got a museum Love me, uh-huh, and she got a museum, oh yeah I'm the mileage in the red hot, oh, she got a museum I'm the mileage in the red hot, yeah, she got a museum I'm on house in the back room with the kid to sleep Shoot a ring where you live in there, you have to be by my heart I'm the mileage in the red hot, oh, she got a museum Love me, and she got a museum She has such a sweet voice, and when I hear it, I start missing her, but I know that's just my self-destructive side, because there's only one thing to concentrate on now, and that's the music. It's like concentrating on a cow if you're a farmer in the old days. If you had, like, girls around you all the time, and, you know, and people screaming in cars and lights and billboards and televisions and news media and police. Mm -hmm. you, the farmer wouldn't be able to concentrate on just the cow like he could. Since I'm granted the privilege of actually being able to concentrate on one thing for these couple of months, I should really make the most of it. Hey, I'm so happy. <laughs> so happy to be on the magazine. Yeah! All the girls are gonna love us! Yeah! I'm gonna love you, you came in my mouth. All the girls are gonna wanna suck our fucking assholes. That's right. They love us because we're rock stars and we have lots of money. Right. Yes. And big penises. Huge fat cocks. Don't forget the important stuff, guys. That was great. <laughs> okay, snip only the first roll. Okay. Right. Here we go. All right, that was great. You got some on your chest, too. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, it looks Doesn't like a load. Anybody? Yeah, it looks like fleece sprayed a load on my <laughs> chest. <laughs> <laughs> we all know the truth. Last few friends, you guys. Make them good. Come on. Nobody else is asking. I'm kidding. What else can I say? <laughs> well, I mean, like, if I get naked, will that make you feel more comfortable? Huh? I said, if I got naked, would that make you feel more comfortable? Want to get naked? Not
Which note? The one you guys are singing. We were singing a few notes. Well, the whole thing is a little sharp. Oh, okay. It's not like the history. I mean, to do the history of the band is, it's a book. We could definitely write a book. I think the Peppers have been through more shit than anybody. You know, as long as this band exists, the whole reason for our existence is movement and going forward and expanding and growing and learning and playing and getting better at what we're doing. And, you know, as we, as we grow and we learn about life, we're able to channel more of it into the music and the music gets better because, you know, as we learn more, we don't lose anything that we had, we just add to it. <laughs> The, the pitch isn't the problem. Uh, the, it's just on rhythms, you should just lock up more and emphasize the right one, so let's just sing it once. Or listen to me sing it once. Mm -hmm. Three, four. Under the bridge downtown is where I drew some blood. Under the bridge downtown, I could not get enough. Under the bridge downtown, forgot about my love. Under the bridge downtown, I gave my life away. You know, ever since I was a kid, my specialty was kind of writing. I mean, that's what came naturally to me was, was words. You know, as meaningless as words can be, I kind of had fun with them, putting them together and, and writing about things that, that maybe other people weren't writing about. There's a song on our new record called Under the Bridge, which is a salad, um, a ballad, if you will. Uh, and that song came about because um, during the course of my life, uh, I was uh, what you might call a hardcore junkie for many years. And uh, during that point in my life, it was a very sad time. And, and uh, everything that was beautiful and precious and sacred to me sort of took a back seat um, as, as my need for this chemical dependency just got more and more disgusting and insane. 
and uh, fortunately, I've been clean for three years now, and my life took some massive changes, and uh, and everything that was sacred and beautiful that I had lost has now come back to me more than I could have ever hoped for. But during that time, I reached some, some ultimately low depths of incomprehensible demoralization, um, you know, which are, are very much in my memory, and. Um, and, and part of that incomprehensible demoralization is loneliness. And, um, and that's, that's something that I think every drug addict can relate to, is there's this incredible deep sense of loneliness, of emptiness, that you're trying to fill up with whatever it is that you can find. And, you know, in my case, it was drugs. So sometimes I get these bursts of loneliness that, that um, kind of remind me of, of that point in my life. And uh, one day I was driving back from the rehearsal for this last record that we were writing, and, and I got one of those bursts of loneliness and, and I didn't really feel like there was a single soul in the universe that I could connect with. You know, on, on a gut level, on a heart level, on a spiritual level, on a level of love, I just felt like I was all by myself. So I started singing to myself um, on the freeway, on the Hollywood freeway, coming back from rehearsal. And without, without thinking about anything, um, an entire song came through my head and when I got home I wrote it down. And, uh, and the crux of the song is, is based on loneliness. And, and there's this one little lyrical phrase that comes in at the very end of the song, which says, under the bridge downtown is where I drew some blood. Under the bridge downtown, I forgot about my love. Under the bridge downtown, I could not get enough. Under the bridge downtown, I gave my life away. And what that was referring to was a point in time about five years ago when, um, when I had nothing in my life. I had no, no friends or... Uh, or places to live, or automobiles, or relationships with my family, and all, all I had was this uh, this connection of mine named Mario, who was a Mexican mafia ex-convict, and, and he and I would stroll the streets of downtown um, looking for our next score. And on, on one particular afternoon, it was very hot in the middle of summer, and I'd been up for days, and he and I found what we were looking for, and we went to this bridge that was downtown in the middle of Los Angeles in this ghetto, and it was a, a freeway bridge. And um, there was a little passageway that you had to go to to get under the bridge, and, and only certain members of this Mexican gang, which were all ex-convicts, were allowed to go in there. And the reason that they let me in is because this guy Mario said that I was going out with his sister, which was a lie, just so we could go in there and, um, and do what it is we wanted to do, which was to use these particular drugs we had just gotten. And, uh, and that always sticks in my brain as, um, you know, a low point in my life, basically. You know, about as low as, as I could get. And um, the chorus of the song is, I don't ever want to... I don't ever want to feel like I did that day. Take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. And the place I love is where I am now. Um, making music with, with my band and, and making love with, with my friends and my, my girlfriends, which is... To me, you know, the most sacred thing that I have going is, uh, is creating sound with, with my best friends. You guys have a nice time. Thank okay. you for that day. What's your names with six people? Do you know who those guys are? Um, third base. That group, third base. That guy who was walking over there. That was third base. And Horowitz. That guy. Yeah. That guy, Adam Horowitz, is, uh, what's the, the Beastie Boys? Hey, how you doing? Lovely party. Beautiful women and gentlemen. More beer? Should we go to five minutes? No beer? How about beer? So it should be here shortly. Should I keep my glass or we still like waiting for glasses too? Yeah, there's some more glasses. Oh, now we're waiting for the wine. Nile I own the house, so I'm done. Yeah, you sure are. Have a nice time. Thank you. Oh, after you. I guess, like, because there's no alcohol, what are you doing? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, you I don't know why I'm not on this, but so be it. Sorry. See ya. Okay, have a nice night. Okay.
<laughs> I hate attorneys. I know. <laughs> Just because I'm going to school to be one. I hate you. Huh? I hate attorneys. When I got divorced, my first wife killed me. Yeah. The attorneys on the problem. They're all crooks. And look where this guy's park. Tony let him park. Did he? He said he's only going to be five minutes. No, he was less. We're going to go back to life as actual human beings instead of monks. And I've never taken anything so seriously in my life. And, and, uh, and I've never been so proud of anything that I've ever done because I've always felt like I was a failure. And now we've done something as a band of friends that I'm 100% proud of. So it's a very sentimental time, but Try to be strong and just get my shit together. Fuck, how am I going to do this? It's like fucking somebody may be the most beautiful experience in the world, but I personally wouldn't want to fuck even the most beautiful girl in the world for like, you, you can only fuck her for so long. Like what may be a beautiful sexual experience in an hour, you may not want it to go on for seven hours or it wouldn't be as beautiful. It's like now is going to come the time to go on tour, so that's just another thing. It's not like I'm gonna miss anything. Oh shit. Just my the blood in my feet. Could be with your feet and stuff. <laughs> oh god, Johnny, why are you pushing over here? Are you huh? Oh, I'm very scared. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm going up on this for a minute. Oh my god, Anthony! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Take the fucking picture! For fucking... Oh! 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 And everyone... Oh! 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 Take this fucking picture. Start snapping. Yeah, Start please. snapping. Yeah, Fuck you. Fuck you, Jay. Hey, Bob! Yeah, you guys are top hanging up there, aren't you? Hang, I fucking beat your ass. Chad! Chad, look here. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I have no sense of which way it's going. Huh? My feet are starting to die. I really think I can't eat again. I can't eat again. So you should shoot it. Shoot him out, Oh, you are shooting? Yeah, yeah. Chad, you didn't Have you ever seen the cocks and socks? Sure. Yeah, yeah. This could be as classic as that. You know, as long as the longevity of the band stays together and we keep it together as people and as musicians, um, we'll always get better, and I think that people will always like that. And uh, so as long as we stay together and, you know, keep our love for one another and our love for the music, there's no way that we're going to fail. <laughs>